we have a pullback. You're listening to Kick Around Table. I'm your host, Michael McRae. With me is Kicker correspondent, Paul Harris. Hi, Paul. Hey, Michael. How are you? We have no guest. The gold price has been sold down aggressively since last Monday, bottoming at the 1890-1900 region. In mid-April, gold failed for a second time at overcoming the key $2,000 level. Gold then dropped $100 lower, due mostly to a sharp rise in U.S. Treasury yields and the U.S. dollar zooming past the psychological $100 level on the DXY. So, rough week for gold, good week for the U.S. dollar. This month, the greenback is on track for its best month in seven years. Copper was off about 5% for the week. Concerns about the pandemic and an industrial slowdown in China weighed. In its earnings, Caterpillar warned that demand in China will be weak, similar to what was experienced in the 2019 during the start of the pandemic. The Chinese government did announce aggressive stimulus to support the economy. Let's talk headlines, but first our sponsor. Copper is a new oil. According to Goldman Sachs, and Libero Copper holds a collection of porphyry copper deposits in the Americas in prolific but stable jurisdictions. Libero is focused on its Makoa property, a copper molybdenum deposit in Colombia. The company announced a recent intercept of hole 043, hitting 1,229 meters, grading at 0.42% copper, 0.047 molybdenum, or 0.58% copper equivalent. The company's focus on environmental social governments will be key to unlocking the project's value. Outside of Makoa, Libero's portfolio includes Big Red, a new greenfield porphyry copper deposit, and Big Bulk. Both are in the Golden Triangle, Canada. And in Argentina, Libero has the Esperanza a copper, gold copper discovery in San Juan. Once again, that's Libero Copper on the LBC Venture Exchange. Paul, what did you see in mining? Quite a, a mixed bag this week. Thank you, Michael. Um, perhaps the, the most uh, noteworthy news is that police in Peru cleared protesters blocking access to MMG's Las Bambas copper mine in Apurimac. The mine has been plagued with protests by different communities intermittently since it came into production in 2016. The most recent protest um, saw protesters occupy land belonging to the mine, following which Las Bambas requested action from the authorities and the government declared a 30 day state. 30 day state of emergency in the district and sent in the police to clear them. Um, in Canada, Core Mining made a new discovery at its silver tip operation in British Columbia, which it said indicates significant growth potential immediately west of existing infrastructure. Surface and underground drilling led to the discovery of a zone called the Camp Creek West, where first drill holes returned the highest grade thickness assays at silver tip to date, with highlights such as 12 meters grading 460 grams per tonne silver, 15% zinc, and about 9% lead. In Chile, NGEX Minerals reported initial assay results from its 2022 drilling campaign at the Los Helados Porphyry Copper Gold Project, its first drilling there since 2015. The company reported a highlight of 876 metres, grading 0.74% copper equivalent in hole 73, which also included intervals of about 700 metres, grading 0.8% copper, and 210 metres, grading more than 1.7%. 1% copper equivalent. Los Alados has an existing resource of 2.1 billion tonnes in the indicated category. The project is within the Vicuña district, an emerging cluster of major copper gold silver deposits, which includes the Fila, the Sol deposit of Fila Mining and Jose Maria of Jose Maria Resources, which is being acquired by Lundin Mining. Sticking in Chile, Chile's state copper company Cadelco is seeking joint venture partners for 34 non-core copper and gold exploration projects with an aggregate size of 250,000 hectares uh, available throughout the country in various different stages of advancement. Eight projects have drilling, 22 have geophysical surveys, and 33 have geochemical surveys. Cadelco has a similar joint venture agreement in place with Freeport McMoran for the exploitation of the El Abra mine. Moving to Africa now, Asante Gold entered into a share purchase agreement with Kimros Gold to acquire a 90% interest in the Shirano gold mine in Ghana for 225 million US dollars. The Ghanaian government retains a 10% carried interest in the project. Asante has other mining operations in Ghana, with Shirano resulting in the company having an entire district stair. Asante has other mining operations in Ghana 
including Tirana, resulting in the company having an entire district scale gold trend exceeding 53 kilometers in length with two modern process plants. And finally, Paycor Minerals began trading on the TSXV under the ticker CORE, and it reported its first hole from the FAD project in Nevada, which intersected multiple mineralized horizons over the first 110 meters of the hole, with a highlight of 28 meters, grading 4.5 grams per ton gold equivalent. FAD is immediately south of and a long strike from I-80 Gold's Ruby Hill Mine, and it's a project that was previously owned by Barrett Gold and Home State Mining. Thank you, Paul. Let's turn to our number of the week or figure in my case. Uh, my number is, or my figure I should say, is tied. Figure again, tied. If you go back to the inception of Kathy Wood's ARC in 2014, it is close to tying the S&P 500 for similar returns. So once again, ARKK has the same returns as the general market index. Kathy Wood, who leads up ARC, has been the gold crowd's bugaboo uh, due to the high profile and focus on tech and crypto, as well as throwing water on the inflation narrative. Look. It's turned bad for gold, but at least the gold crowd can point to ARKK. ARKK number is from Bloomberg's Joe Beisenthal. Paul. The number that, what, what, that stuck out for me this week uh, comes from Yamana Gold, and it's 1.5 or 1.5 million ounces to be more precise. The, the company is sort of consolidating its production at uh, 1 million ounces a year, but now it's talking about uh, the plans and how it's going to get to 1.5 million ounces. So um, Yamana seems to be continuing to go strong and, and continuing to build and grow. That's it for us. Paul, you have a show coming up in Quito, Colombia. That's right. In about uh, six weeks time, CGS Quito on the 6th and 7th of June, um, two day event focusing on the copper and gold space, the projects, the government, uh, government policy, and all the lovely things around it, such as water, environment, communities, forests, and things of that nature. Follow Paul at Paul Harris Gold and me at Michael McRae, McRae with two C's. If you like what you hear, tell a friend. Don't forget to subscribe. On behalf of Paul Harris and myself, have a pleasant weekend. <laughs>